I, last night I heard some guys talking about uh, leverage and of course that's kind of a, one of the bigger concepts that we're discussing here at, this, at the Cool Clinic this year. Uh, these are some ideas that, that we, uh, we generally talk about when we think about how do we generate leverage, gain leverage, and, and win on the line of scrimmage yeah. based on my experiences in uh, martial arts and uh, also knowing the game of football. Forward, I'm uh, drawing my hands back in a V with my face out front and I'm, I'm making contact here. I'm fitting my fingers in soft right in the, right in the armpit. It's going to protect my fingers but it enables me to deliver with my, the, the heel of my hand, make that strike. So it's really powerful here. I can start generating that lift vertically. So there's the thumbs at the 45 or greater. I mean you can, you, you know, again, if you want to get them out a little bit, the elbows tighten down. The hips uh, catch up the elbows tightening down to the buttress and that's, I call this a buttress. I use architectural terms. I latch and screw, and I walk my hips, now I have a buttress. It's basically the groove above the hip bones. So the buttress here is preventing that from breaking. And that's very strong, extremely strong. If you're out here, you can get collapsed. That's the bridge series. That's what we do with safe football. The bridge series will make you strong and it'll keep you safe. The buckle series will break you down. We basically use this buckle series to break the bridge. Bridge being the strongest position, now we want to break and buckle that bridge. That's what this whole concept is about. Easier. We're not relying on, on brute strength and trying to just manipulate somebody. We're going to lag and lift, and that's what the next piece is. Right. Now I want to lag and lift, and the lag is the most important piece when you're working inside the frame. Yeah. It's, it's sucking that elbow in like as if you're doing a lat pull, and you're tightening that lat down. And what that does is that breaks down his shoulder. So you already got him here. See, he's gonna, and I'm, not, and I'm not doing it with a lot of force. I'm just, I'm just tightening my lat, dragging him. Now I've got that spine tilted, right? And then, now I'm gonna lift. So it's a, it's a pop. So, so those of you that said uh, the hands inside are critical, they are, now they are, they're good. But I can show you how they beat that. So if I can, I can ratchet his hands in, basically this is an optimal position, thumbs up, 90 degree, right on the buttress there. The difference between that and a shoulder submission is about that much. It's a really powerful thing. Watch, this is just one hand. I can just, I'm not moving my feet. So, is that powerful? Yeah. Here, I'm just holding space on a slide protection. I can help my guy out over here as I move. But I like to make contact with the straight arm. A couple coaching points I look for. I look for the head. Again, it goes back to the spine alignment. The head is down. That's an indicator that his spine is out of sorts and we can drag him down or snap him down. I'm going to fold that, that one of the elbows. So this, on this side, I'm going to fold that elbow. As I do so, I'm, I'm going to chop the other arm by hitting that nerve right in, the, right in the joint line. So if he's doing it here, I'm going to show you the chop on this side first. So he's pushing. So, th so that's going to that's gonna open that hand up. I'm folding his elbows in because if he's got his hands inside, now I hop back. Even though my hips come forward, I'm, I'm regaining my composure with my hips toward the end. This is the, the fold and chop. He's so prying back up and I'm going to refit that hand. So if I don't get my way, I'm going to fold him, refit. It's another way to, it's, just a, it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game, but very effective. But what I like to do is just be able to develop the, the microcosm of football, which is the, the individual player, which is hard to do it at a lot of higher levels of football, as you guys know. We can become better football players by practicing the skills of football. Um, I think it's something that it's, it's really the, the piece where I think that the most growth and development is possible and it's a piece that's getting taken off the table because of some of these policies out there. Um, so we like to do these things in drills that we can fit into the, uh, the standard off-season training programs. Thanks for having me at the Cool Clinic.